being woken up that night in the middle of the night on January 29th of 2004. I don't know, I ever forget it. I can, I, I still, in my mind, I can feel, I can still feel being jolted awake. I can still feel being groggy. For him to sit down and tell me, I, I don't know how to tell you this. I'm so sorry, but your sister Elizabeth died today in a car accident. I mean, how do you, how do you take that in? On a plane and went home and two days later saw her dead in the casket. She was, without a doubt, unquestionably my soulmate. On the, the deepest form possible. And I thought I'm a kid, alone, in a sea of people, with nowhere to go. So I turned from, I turned from the natural stages of grief which I did not do, and I ate. I ate everything in sight. I felt sad, I ate, and the food took away the pain. But then to see myself looking in a mirror and seeing this gigantic <laughs> chin and having this gigantic body, and I don't recognize who this person is. Who is this person I'm looking at? No, this is, this is ridiculous. This has to change. And it wasn't a starting Monday, I'm gonna go on a diet. No, it, was, it was at that second. It's my choice. I choose right now to not be this way. And that was kind of the, one of the main turning points of my life. I'm a big TI because I love to teach. At the base of everything, I love to teach. I love to be around people. And I'm good at it. You become a TI. You got a loud, powerful voice. You've got an awesome presence with you. What they're going to give you is awesome campaign hat. And this campaign hat, that thing is slick. And it demands respect, and people fear it. But the campaign, the campaign, campaign hat, does not make you anything but a person wearing a campaign hat. You should be able to. Take that hat off and still lead airmen. Yeah, you bet, you better believe I'm gonna be mean to you, but not mean in the way you you think. I'm gonna be mean in the sense that I'm gonna challenge you. But if you mess up, bet you're gonna know about it. However, when you do good things, young man or young lady, bet you're gonna know about it. The best of us are forged in the hard times. The even better of the best of us can forge others in the wake of their hard times. But that's her getting sick. I'm, I mean, sick and quick. But every time I go to the doctor, all five times I saw the doctor, it was just nothing. No, you're fine. You're okay. You're stressed out. No, 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 you just got pneumonia, you're good. <laughs> okay. At the time, I had no idea what palpitations were, but it was palpitating horribly. It would be just boom, 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 boom. And I can't even move out of my bed. I gotta take a break to walk to the bathroom. I get tired sitting up. I sit up, my heart, I gotta take a break. This is an unreal. It takes me three different sessions to get 25 feet to my bathroom. I could walk to my first dresser. I would have to stop to catch my breath. That's ridiculous. I will walk another six steps just to get up two steps to the sink area. Stop, catch my breath. Walk to the bathroom and I would have to sit down because I couldn't stand long enough because of my breath. I'd have to get fired up and pumped up just to stand up. No, I ain't right. Got on a plane. I flew. Got the plane. Sure enough, 11 hours later in the emergency room. Zip 
a whole bunch of doctors come walking in. Where are you, where are you from? I'm like, I'm from Greenland, I don't know. How long have you had these symptoms? October? He was like, no. He says, you're pretty sick, bud. I says, yeah, I feel that way. And then they gave me, he says, uh, do some blood tests. They come back with blood tests. He says, your blood tests are off the charts. Medically speaking, we really don't have any medical idea as far as why you're still alive. But people have a thing called congestive heart failure. Then now I'm kind of getting freaked out because that's a scary word or a scary term. There's four levels of congestive heart failure, one through four, obviously. If there was a five, you'd be on the better to five. We, we have never seen anybody this bad. I go into surgery. Then the next thing you know, I come out of surgery. But what I didn't know is what happened in that time. Your shirt walks in front of me and he's crying. Now, I'm just looking at him kind of strange because I really can't talk, but in my mind I'm thinking, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> you know? And he says, brother, it is so good to see you. Thanks. Uh, uh, okay. The doc, my surgeon walks up and he says, <laughs> we had a pretty rough time with you. And then we had complications. And I didn't have to say what. My facial expression was questioned enough. And so I shoot my eyebrows and kind of shrug and give him the, what are you, what are you talking about look? He says, during your surgery, your liver shut down. Your liver failed. Okay, well again, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure it's not good. And then your kidneys started to shut down. You know, it's the beginning stages of renal failure, and people don't come back from that. When that happens, you, you throw in the towel when you wait for things just to stop. Your body was, was done. That was the easy part. I had accomplished the easy part in this. There's so much more to go. <laughs> Now it's just me. There's no more nurses. There's no more people to come by and say, hey, we're proud of you. Keep the great work. It's just, it's me. My nightmares were just unbelievable. I, I dreamed my death thousands of times. I'm done. I cannot, I cannot do it. I have no purpose. I have no nothing. I'm done. I, I love to read. I obsessively love to read. And it's funny that one of my favorite stories was kind of the thing that drove me to one. I, <laughs> it was Edgar Allan Poe's The Telltale Heart, where he talks about killing this dude, whatever it is, but his heart still beats on his eyes, looking at him and kind of stuff. And he, he hears his heart, he hears a heart, he hears a heart, he hears a heart. No matter where he goes, he's under the planks, he hears a heart. He turns himself in because he couldn't take it anymore. My valves tick, 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 nonstop. It's all I ever hear. Hey, this, for the rest of my life, they're gonna tick. But I'd lay in bed and I would just hear, tick, 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 and every tick was there. My heart telling me who I am. I wasn't telling it nothing. It was telling me, you fail, you fail, you fail, you fail. That's all I hear. No, I'm not having that. I hated this thing. Then I hit hated it because it reminded me every single second of every single day that I'm a failure because I did something wrong. Everything collapsed because of what I did. And so sure enough, quit taking my pills for a week because I want to make sure this sucker is good and tired. It was a Saturday morning. I was bawling, woke up, bawling, got my bike, <laughs> hooked it up. Now, was this a feasible option of killing myself? No, probably not, but it was, that was my intent. I was told over and over and over again, I can't overstress this or else it will it'll shut down. Well, good. <laughs> I want you to shut down. I want you to explode like you exploded my life. So I get on that bike. 
and I pedaled my brains out as hard as I could. And I go 42 and a half miles south, and I didn't die. I got stop. I stopped because I got hungry. And I and I remember stopping because I was hungry. And I was mad. Really? I can't even. At first, you wouldn't. So now I'm irritated. <laughs> and that was a, a mission to make this thing stop. Turn around, haul butt back. I pass out a couple of times, wreck a couple of times. <laughs> Every time I kind of come to is still, there's no way. <laughs> and I kept thinking to myself, God, if I could have anybody in my corner right now to get me out of this freaking tar pit of hate. It had to be me, but I can't do it. This Matthew can't do it. And so, I created my own split personality. I want to be myself. But the old self, I want to be the monster. The monster was my handle as a TI. I need that guy because I know for a fact he cares. And talk to you like yourself because you're not. I know it. I need him. So I created it in my head. And I would actually envision myself, ping, I get to a bad place. You make life. I could see myself looking at myself with my campaign head on. So I stopped walking. In my head, I stopped. And I turned around. And I started walking forward. Every morning, I began to wake up and I even do it today. I'll do it tomorrow until the day I die. Put my hand on my heart while I'm still in bed and I feel my heart beating. I feel, you can feel the tick, you can feel it, the valve's going, but I, but I want to feel it and I want to hear it. And I accept who I am. I accept my heart because you're mine and you're strong as hell, you little stubborn jerk. <laughs> today, Matthew Zine chooses to have a good day and today, I'm going to make an impact on somebody. Gone. And the more I can talk, the more I can mentor, the more I can infect people with my positive attitude. And if I can be happy and work it, we'll be good. <laughs>